My name is Nick Woodjat and I'm the Soil Fertility Consultant for Ava Fertiliser. We're here today basically to look at doing a brew and a mix for creating a, a seed dressing to replace the chemical ones that we're using up to now. To aid us today, we're here at Overbury Enterprises, to, for which we thank them very much for allowing us to use this marvellous site. As you can see, we've got a, a bank of brewers in here. And also we are joined with uh, Jake Freestone, who is the farm manager, who is taking a great interest in all things regenerative farming and brewing. So, which is, I think is fair to say, isn't it? So it is indeed, Nick, you, un yes. you, you understand the reasons for wanting to move forward and hopefully growing with less fertilizer and less chemicals. Is that, yeah. is that is the aim? And also improving soil health. For the future. Absolutely. Well, that is a fantastic idea. So I think what we'll start is, Jake and I will look at the actual equipment, first of all. And as you can see, very, very simplistic. An IBC with the top cut out. Now, it's worth taking the top out because it means that you can clean inside. And as, as we all know, if you're brewing up, the last thing we want are any strangers in the way of bacteria in here. So cleanliness is next to is efficiency in here. So it needs to be kept clean. So you need to be able to get all the corners. So simple tank, top cut out. What we've been discovering lately is the fact that if we get the a heater in here, we can actually speed up the process. So although it's a plain tank, we have learned at Tim Parton's farm that if we put lagging on the tank and a water heater here, we can greatly increase the speed of the brew. So to go from 24 to 30 hours down to around about 14 to 16, greatly improves it. And although I'm yet to prove it, it probably means we're getting more bacteria in the brew. Tim, it is worth mentioning Tim, I would, I would thank Tim that I can mention him here. He probably is one of, if not the leading regenerative farmer in the country and he has transformed his land just by going down the regenerative route and the fact he is another farm manager that has a passion for, for soil, his, his knowledge of regenerative farming and his generosity of knowledge is second to none. So I thank Tim for letting me mention him there. So here at the moment, we're at a bit more of a, at, at the starting stage. Tank, hole cut out the middle to keep it clean. And then basically we've got a simple pump. And that pump is connected to probably the most important part of the brewing kit. I see people who try and get some just uh, PVC pipe and drill holes in. You can't do that. What, you basically, what you're paying for when you get this, and this is German engineering, is there's a sleeve over here and you can't actually see, or you just, just see indentations, but it's almost you can't see the holes. So basically what you've got there is thousands of little holes which create millions of little bubbles. And that's what we want. So the brewing aspect is the bubbles coming up through the water and you've got such a large surface area of bubble that the air then, or at least the oxygen in the air, can transfer to the water. And what we're looking for is a minimum of six parts per million dissolved oxygen at the end of the brew, not at the start, it'll be a lot higher at the start, but at the end of the brew, it still needs to be six parts per million. So it's vital to have the right piece of kit in the bottom of the tank. If you've got big bubbles just going bloom, it won't work. You won't have enough oxygen and the product will just die in the tank. So we'll pop that back in. Nick, does it make a difference if you're using um, tap water or rainwater, for instance, in the brewing process? That's an immensely important question. Rainwater, to be perfectly honest, rainwater is by far the best. It's, it'll be the same. If you could catch enough rainwater to do all your spraying and all your brewing, it would be wonderful. In our kitchen, for instance, if we fill the kettle up, it smells like a swimming pool. Seven Trent have got so much chlorine coming through at the moment, so it depends where you are in the country and what you've got. Um, I've got to be honest, I can't smell a lot of chlorine here, even so it, it may be that you haven't got the problem. To be on the safe side, if it's tap water, you bubble it for an hour. Okay. And if you bubble it for an hour, chlorine's got such a weak link on water, it bubbles off. That's why swimming pools stink so much, it's coming off the water all the time, and it's the same, we'll just bubble it off. And also, that's a good point to mention at this stage as well. We are brewing, for the seed treatment, we are brewing a brewed inoculum. Now, a brewed inoculum simply means that we are brewing exactly what is in the tin. We know what's in there, we know the job it's expected to do, and we know how to brew it. You will hear quite a lot of com words about compost teas. Compost teas are, are different in the fact is that you take all your materials from around the farm, 
composted and then you take five kilograms of compost put it into a thousand liters of water and brew that the danger of a compost tea which is why you have to spend such a lot of time getting them right is you're never quite sure what you're brewing mm. now you are brewing or you're probably brewing all the good stuff on your farm but you also might be picking up one of the umacetes or or anything one of the bad guys that we don't want so yeah. compost teas aren't quite as simple so one of the best places to start is with brood inoculums because you're getting exactly what it says on the tin so uh, no, we're now ready to go nick so um what's the first port of call well the first thing is we turn the bubbler on if you would be so kind let's do that And now, as we can see, we've got millions of bubbles coming up, aerating that, that, that water. The fact it's been bubbled for an hour beforehand as well means that there is lots of dissolved oxygen in this water and we're ready to go. Even if it's not wholly necessary, it isn't a bad idea to brew for an hour beforehand because, of course, you're building up the oxygen that yeah. you want. The thing is, when you put them in, when you do put the microbes in, it does take three or four hours for them to actually come off the carrier. So that isn't wholly so you, but oxygen is always a good thing. Yeah. With any brew of, of living material, it means you've got to feed it. So if you're expecting that to come up to cover a thousand liters of water to cover 20 hectares, we're gonna to have to feed it to brew it up. Now there is an important point to be made here. This brew is never going to be as good as using that product out of the can. The reason we do this is this is arable farming we always have to look at costs. If we use it straight out of the can, we're probably looking at 25 pounds a hectare, whereas if we brew it, we're looking at three pounds a hectare. That's the reason we brew. I'm not claiming that we are brewing this up to perfection, but if we put it in with the right food source afterwards, it's a fantastic jump towards perfection. So here we go. We got it brewing, we got it bubbling, we've got clean water, it's been, it's been dechlorinated. The tank is clean, as you can see everything is kept perfectly clean, so we need food sources. The first food source we're going to do, obviously this is normally fed, brought out of an IBC, but we've brought in a 20 litre for today, is because we're doing a product, uh, a brew for 20 hectares, we're going to put 20 litres of Nurture N in. Nurture N is a huge source of fulvic acid, and a huge source of protein. It is fermented molasses, so you've got protein in there, you've got N in its amino N form, you've got all loads of goodies in there, so lots of stuff that all the, the microbes over there are really going to like swimming around in. So we'll carefully put that in, and there we go. Obviously there is one thing to say here, you don't have to brew a thousand liters at a time. This is being brewed to cover 20 hectares. If you've got 10 hectares to do, you just half it. Um, to be perfectly honest, if you've got 10 hectares to do, I'd probably still do as a thousand liters of water and just half the product that's going in. So there we go. And that's the, uh, the nurture end. That is most of the food source. And in some cases, that's what some pe all some people would use. Um, I also as well add a little bit of amino, amino acid. I've become quite, just lately, a massive fan of amino acids in all sorts, in all sorts of ways. There's 300 grams of naturamine, which is 80% free amino acids. Again, it's a very good, uh, it's just making it really nice for these bacteria. It's, there's plenty of food, it's making them a nice place to be. Um, what we can do, or normally if it is very, we'll just copy it, but we'll take a little bit of liquid out and we'll pour that into there to mix it up. So there we have it. We have the, the food source is bubbling away and we're going to add the uh, naturamine and in it goes. Clean it out, it's all gone, all, all done. Now, there is one thing here and I know you're really interested in this. It is important to note that when you're brewing a living product, when it's finished in this time tomorrow, you've only got a relatively short time to use it. It should be a matter of hours before it's used up. When, you, when you're keeping it, you keep it alive, you, and that's where you can see that the, there's timers on all the plugs here. You bubble for 10 minutes in every hour to 
keep the air in there so the product survives, or at least the bacteria and the fungi and everything survives in there. So the next part, the most important part, this is what's doing the job. This is the AF Bio Plus T, which is a mix of bacteria and fungi, which are going to do all the little jobs that we know they're going to do. We've got the Azosporillum, uh, Azotobacter. These are dissolving nitrogen. I mean, you've got 74,000 tonnes of N floating over the air, over every hectare. Mm. You can use that for nothing. Well, that's why these, that's what this bacteria will do. You've got Bacillus subtilis in there, one of my favourites. It is the big boy when it comes to competing for food and space with harmful pathogens. It will push them out of the way and it will grow with the roots. You've got Painobacillus in there. Now, Painobacillus is one of the stepping stones of, of biology because Painobacillus means nearly, nearly bacteria. It's where bacteria is changing into fungi and this is a halfway house. And again, it's breaking down to things in the soil. Also, you've got Trichoderma. The T stands for Trichoderma harsianum. And again, that fights for space and food for the harmful pathogens, so it's giving you disease resistance. But one of the biggest things that they all do as a team is they break down nutrients and make them available to the plant. Okay. And of course, so you get a, a much healthier plant. So it's a powder. Now you will notice this is the first time everything I've used up to now has, has been organic, very clean, very tidy. This is a powder. The only that's worth saying as a, as a safety note here, no member of staff should ever do anything like this, whether it's our product or anybody else's, shouldn't do anything like this if they are immune compromised. So if anybody's at work and they've, unfortunately they've got a disease where they're having chemo or anything like that, they can't come near this. Yeah. Um, so that's important to mention. That, it's, it? That's very important to mention. Yeah. And also, I a step back while you it's the only time, it's a it's, You've got to think about this now. There are literally billions of microbes in here, bacteria. You don't really want to breathe them. So just, just so that I don't breathe any dust in, we've got the mask on and we put it in. And as you can see, it just goes into the water nice and gently. Don't just put it in one great blob. And there we have it, all gone in all gone straight into the water and of course no mixing is needed because it's the very nature of what's happening in the tank is, is mixing it automatically. And there we have it, that is a brew for 20 hectares to go on with seed which will be now ready in approximately 24 hours. We've got a 1,200 litre tank here, which nicely fills uh, one IBC's worth of, of worth of brew. That gets pumped in through this uh, 90 degree elbow here. And then we have a, a wider opening on the top so that we can add other products to the, to the brew at the time of, of drilling, really. Uh, we've also got a clean water tank, which holds 80 litres. And we can use that to flush the system through at the end of the day um, to make sure that we can keep the hygiene up. And that gets pumped right the way through the drill tractor, all the way through to the openers. So all the pipes carrying the brew are cleaned out at the end of every day. It is worth mentioning that the other products that go in with the brew is that we put a food source, nurture in, just to feed the, the products when they're in the soil. Silicon to strengthen the plant to help uh, reduce PGRs and fungicide. And on lighter soils, we do use a, a phosphorus that doesn't lock into the soil to again increase the root mass. Okay then, let's, shall we follow the pipe work down and see what all the fuss was about? Right, well here we are at the business end where the liquid has come down from the front of the tractor. It's gone to the center of, of the drill where it is then split into two. There's a pump either side on a drill this size. The liquid is then split up into a number of small pipes, which are then fed round to each, each, uh, each drill. And then they run down and into the slot where I can hand over to Jake. Thank you, Nick. So the, the brew is effectively blown down through a peristaltic pump into the seed channel. So the cross slot is, is cutting with a disc through the soil and through any residue, um, laying a trail of seed that comes down through this slot here and then the brew is literally poured on at 100 litres a hectare is the volume we're using, straight onto that seed before it's closed up with the press wheels at the back of the drill, uh, getting it in contact with the soil and the seed, which is where it really wants to be. It's important to say there it is going directly onto the seed where you're going to get the most efficient use of what you're putting on. Yes, we can spray it on. Yes, we can do all sorts of things. But with this, it's going straight onto that seed. It's going to affect that seed coat. It's going to affect the germination. You're going to get the best result possible. 
So there we have it. We've gone from why we're doing it, how we do it. We've seen the journey the liquid takes right round to the top of the seed where it goes on and does a fantastic job. So all it remains for me to do is to thank Jake and Overbury Enterprises for allowing us to come on and film today. Very appreciative. Thanks ever so much. Obviously, I can't shake hands while I have a wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks, right. mate. Thank you, Jake.